Hi there, this is John Wilkinson from History Made Easier. And in this presentation, I'm going to look at six key factors to think about when you revise the origins of the Cold War. And I'll open with a fundamental factor that should be a part of your thinking in all three topics on the Cold War. And this first fundamental factor, what was the Cold War, even though simple, maybe even obvious, is absolutely critical if you're to be on top of these topics. Do be clear about what the Cold War was. Try and have a sentence that encapsulates it, stored away in your memory. But also a three or four sentence explanation. You might well find yourself using either of them when answering a question in your exam. But more importantly, as I hope I've made clear, it is the cornerstone to your understanding of all three Cold War topics. On the slide, I identify the key elements, but my ebook explaining the Cold War begins with a thorough explanation of just what the Cold War was. But I also have a piece on my website covering this too. And whilst we're on the subject of just what the Cold War was, you should also be clear about when you think it started and why there can be different opinions on what seems a pretty straightforward question. As you can see on my slide, there are options. The Yalta Conference, when the first signs of differences showed themselves. The Potsdam Conference, when the differences, particularly over Germany, widened and Truman and Stalin antagonized each other. Churchill's Iron Curtain speech, a declaration of a Cold War? Or was the Truman Doctrine the declaration? And then there's the Berlin blockade. The last causal factor or the first act of the Cold War? But in explaining the Cold War, ideology really is the central causal factor. This was, first and foremost, a war of ideas. Liberalism versus communism. Liberal democracy versus the single party state and capitalism versus the command economy. It was a war of two opposing ideologies that mistrusted each other. And I would link mistrust very closely to the ideological divide. You can see this in the long-term causes, from intervention in the Russian Civil War to appeasement and the Nazi-Soviet Pact, up to events during the war, like Soviet suspicions regarding the delay to opening a second front against Hitler. But rather than just explaining their differences, and by the way, in doing so, try not to take sides and make one force make one ideology a force for good and one a force for evil, try to show how they simply could not work together. This is why their mutual dis mistrust is so closely linked and it also links to the acquisition of territory and the notion of power as factors that I'll come to later. I know they came to tolerate each other post-Stalin with Khrushchev's peaceful coexistence and later in the thaw of the 1970s, but these were pragmatic in nature. The underlying themes of mistrust and rivalry, if not downright hostility, never really went away. Events can be anything really. The Russian Civil War, the Nazi-Soviet Pact, the war conferences, though as you'll see, I would hold back on them for another section in my analysis. But speeches, policies, anything that happened, I suppose, is an event. And you can split them between long-term and short-term, 
Or if you want to make your analysis even more sophisticated, at a medium term. It's not that difficult. Long term would be anything be before World War II. The Russian Civil War, Britain's appeasement of Hitler and the Nazi-Soviet Pact spring immediately to mind. You could include events during the war or you could make these medium events, if you prefer. And these would include things like the Western powers' delay in opening up a second front or the Red Army's delay in attacking Warsaw. Whilst for me, the short-term events would include any of the post-war events that followed the war in Europe, including the Soviet Union's formal occupation of Eastern Europe, with maybe events in Czechoslovakia seen as the last straw, or America's successful testing of a nuclear bomb, to Churchill's Iron Curtain speech, as we've mentioned already, to events in Greece, the Truman Doctrine and martial aid, right up to the Berlin blockade. But don't just raise these events. Explain why they are significant. And this will require you to link them to things like territory and power and like mistrust. Now, as I hinted in the previous slide, I think the conferences held by the Allies are so important as to deserve their own focus. The context to the conferences is important to consider too, and links to the long-term events are clearly going to be made. Links are so important in good history. The fact that mistrust was already strong between the Allies is linked to these events, or those past events too, and linked to the way the negotiations unfolded. So do bear these things in mind. It was at the Yalta Conference that the difficulties in negotiating a post-war order first really showed themselves. Poland was a problem, so too was Germany and they would both remain so. The sphere of influence that was agreed would lead to misunderstandings too. It goes back to events pre-war as well as during the war. Two things maybe to think about as you piece together the compromises made and the disagreements that still remained. First, Russia had now been invaded three times from the West, by Napoleon, by Kaiser Wilhelm, and by Hitler. So twice by Germany. But Poland was the reason for Britain and France going to war with Hitler. So Germany and Poland were always going to be difficult things to resolve. But the post-war order was also about power. Let's not kid ourselves. And which ideology would dominate the post-war world? So there are links to a number of factors. Now, history is made by people more than it is by ideas and events. And it would be a grave mistake to overlook the personalities of Stalin and Truman but also Churchill and Roosevelt. Churchill because he saw the potential threat of the Soviet Union before anyone else did. And when he saw an ally in Truman, even though he might have been out of power by then, he cultivated his relationship with the American leader. Where did he make his Iron Curtain speech? Fulton, Truman's hometown. And who was on the front row listening to him, having been given a draft of the speech beforehand? Yep, you've got it. Truman. I would include Roosevelt too, though, as it could be argued that he gave away too much in the earlier dealings with Stalin. But it is Stalin and Truman who will be the focus of most of your attention. Stalin, the canny operator, the silent assassin I always think of him as, spending more time listening and weighing up his options in his own mind, 
and saying what the others wanted to hear without any intention of keeping to what he said. And Truman, with his atomic diplomacy, determined to prevent Soviet gains wherever he could. Think of Greece, the Truman Doctrine, and martial aid. And for that matter, his determination to stand firm when Stalin blockaded Berlin. Politics is different to ideology. Ideology is the vision. Politics is getting it done. And at its guts, politics is always about power. Gaining power, increasing power, holding on to power, power. Power is the very essence of politics. That's why controlling the East European states was so important for Stalin. They made a huge buffer zone should any future attempt be made to invade the Soviet Union again. And it made the communist revolution more secure with a bigger marketplace to operate within. More money brings with it more power. But it's why America now had to contain communism and so why Germany, at the heart of Europe, was so important, why the Marshall Plan was so important, and why the declaration of the Truman Doctrine was felt to be so necessary. It's also why Japan was important to America, and why the later loss of China was such a huge loss to America. And sometimes, a country might not be economically important, but they are strategically very important, as having them in your corner, on your side of the fight, meant you and your allies were better protected. It's why Cuba and Vietnam, for example, were seen to be worth fighting for. So, there you have my presentation on the origins of the Cold War. I think it's given you the directions you want to take for your revision, and I think it will help your thinking if you're presented with an origins set of questions in your exam. So I will end things, but not before thanking you for listening, and not before wishing you the best of luck in your revision and in your exam. For now, cheers. <laughs>